hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I'm Jess. This is David, and we are here to get our vibe on. Do we like that? Does that work? No. Uh, mm, I'm still working on it. It did not work. But, but it didn't. It didn't hit the way. I don't I know. Wanted. I don't know if it if it works. It didn't hit the way I wanted it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it. I'm still if play, it works. I'll play with it. I should probably no. actually practice it before sitting behind the mic and then trying practice, to practice. Practice helps. Practice doesn't necessarily something. make perfect, but it it does help. It's, it it's, helps prepare. It's assisting. Yes. So what's new? Oh what's man, new? it's um, it's Sunday. It's Sunday. May twenty third. Twenty third of May. The year of our Lord. The year of our second COVID. Uh, a couple of firsts. One first. This is our first episode of Rush Vibes that we've recorded in the daytime. Yes. And we're only able to accomplish this because our children are nowhere to be found. That doesn't mean we don't know where they are. They're just They're not, here. not here. They're not here right now because they are spending quality time with their grandparents. Yes. Far, yeah. far away from us. So, I mean, not that far. It's like no, they're far. Twenty miles. That's where they, they need to be far because they were they they they, they were wild. It never fails that whenever they are going to their grandparents, they get on this level of crazy that David and I cannot handle it. And I was supposed to take them immediately after school, and I had to do his hair. So I was like, okay, I'll bring the girls back. We'll do your hair, and then I'll take them. Big mistake because these yeah. two They're wilding. Wilding is is respectful. These two were on a level that I cannot even measure. They're on ten. They they're were doing 11. they were both equal it's like they, they met in a corner and they're like, All right, so we just gonna be on one in unity. And they were because usually it's like one of them's on one, the other one's chill, and then they'll switch. No. 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 And no. at one point, David was just like, you know what? Maybe you should just take them and and then we'll finish this later. But I knew that wasn't a good idea. Yeah, I. I he had lost all patience. Like yeah. patients had packed up, moved out, out of state, changed its zip code and everything. Patients didn't, didn't live here anymore. Oh, not for that night. So, yeah, they uh, they're they're at their grandparents. And that gave Jessica and I the opportunity to step out yesterday. We stepped out. We were in the streets. We tried to stunt on somebody. We were in the streets. We went to brunch uptown. Interesting Not to be confused experience. with downtown. Sorry. We don't have a downtown. We don't have a downtown. We have an uptown here in, in the Queen City. They should give us a downtown. I feel like we've earned one. Yeah, we've got a midtown and an uptown. So no downtown. Downtown, you would think, is somewhere somewhere, you know, in the, in the pipeline, but, but maybe not. So we went out. We had brunch, and then we just drove around and looked for some future uh, Rush Vibe Studios mm-hmm. locations. Did some uh, did some touring. Yes. Did some visiting. So hopefully uh, that's something that we'll be able to uh, bring to fruition here in the near term. But for now, this is still We're this still is here. still Rush Five Studios. Still, still have the the residue of cheap East of Easter's cheap path. Easter <laughs> uh, decorations I'm just on I the think wall. We still have the paint. I'm just gonna have to go paint. I'm just gonna paint over. Yeah. It. No. Yeah. You're gonna paint over it because I, you're gonna I fix think, it. I think I have a rip. There was like another holiday that I went to go take off the de- decoration and I didn't pull the command absolute, strip right. Absolutely so ridiculous. So it started to rip. So then I just put it back, I put it back and I've just been reusing Yeah, I'm, it. I'm glad you think it's funny. It's, I mean, it is. Bringing down our property value. Uh, Not really. According to Open Door. <laughs> yeah, Open Door, who won't leave us alone. Yeah, let, me, let me ask you, if anybody out there who owns a home, has Open Door been... In your has open door been sliding into your DMs? Not DMs, your mailbox and your DMs because they will not leave us alone. Somebody texted me on David's behalf and they're like, "Hello, David. It is. It seems. It appears the property value of your home has increased." And we're like, "Thanks, John. I know." It's like, "Nah, uh, I ain't selling." How you get my number? And I'm not David, but yeah. So the property value is going up. Even As with my the damage that <laughs> I, it's because they haven't looked in the house yet. I and the children anyway, haven't. Easter them. Easter decoration residue. Nah, we got to drop like five grand off this this valuation. And what we have to do is take all our pictures down. Yeah, and make sure they don't know we're black. Yeah, we got to get some pictures of like white Jesus up in here. That's a thing. 
Yeah. We got to get the stock pictures when you buy the photo frames and it's already <laughs> and just leave got, them. got just, the family just in there. Just peel off the, yep. the price tag and just leave them. It's like, here you go. Yeah. Uh, it's That's mind boggling, but. I hope y'all know what we're talking about. I don't know if we're, we're I don't know trying if I, to get into no, it, but. No, no. Go look up the lady who had to. It's not just, I mean, there've been several couples who have, who have had their account or several, several instances of either a single black homeowner or a black couple, uh, homeowners who have tried to get their home value appra- values appraised. And then they noticed that it's way low than what the market would suggest. Mm-hmm. And it's because they had, they're alleging that it's because they had, you know, it was a black home. So they had black pictures of the family and, you know, black Black so garden, whatnot. Definitely shouldn't so have they, my Juneteenth so, tree up. So they staged it um, and had a, a white person stand in as a homeowner. Then magically, the value went up. Values went up. So hmm. you do your own do your own math. Results may vary. Yeah. <laughs> so we uh we got a pretty pretty cool show tonight. Uh, no guests, but we are going to be talking about. Um, I guess we could call it a review. Another review mm-hmm. of a mild, uh, review. Mi- mild review of a new t- television show on Stars. Um, called Run the World. Run the World. Is it We Run the World or Run the World? I think it's just Run the World. Run, well, you don't know? It's just Run the World. Okay. We're going to talk about that. Oh, I uh, think Beyonce should be the theme song. I don't know why they didn't pay for that. They probably wouldn't, didn't have the budget for it. But yeah, they probably had the budget for for the, Beyonce. For Bay. Uh, yeah, we'll be talking about that. Uh, Jessica watched it. She told me to take a look at it, and I watched it the other night on the couch. And we have not compared notes. We have not compared notes. We never compare notes here on Rush Vibes when we're discussing we to be objective. media. Yeah, we don't want to come in too Super prepared. Did. So uh, we'll be talking about that, and then some things happened on Twitter over the over the weekend that just I just need I just need to get off my chest. So I, I need to let the chopper sing, as they say. So uh, yeah. More Twitter drama, and then you know whatever else you know we do here. Uh, we may hit a tangent, we may not, but mm-hmm. yeah. So and I just want to say, after last week's episode, I have decided to coin the term "opinionated truth." That's going to be my new. That's that's how I'm going to disclaimer everything I say as my opinionated okay. truth. Okay, Trump. <laughs> uh, and then as a definition, nobody, I always reserve the nobody right. Nobody has more truthful opinions to, to than me. <laughs> And the greatest, and the greatest greatest opinion, opinion, and the greatest greatest thinker, and the greatest thinker, and the only truth in the world. Nobody Uh, has better truth. (laughs) Nobody has truer truth than me. So I, I I just, you're gonna hear me say that a lot. I feel like I dropped it a lot in conversations. Yeah, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it trademarked. But opinionated truth is now mine. On top of hi, hello, hey. So we're just, we're just gonna keep adding. I feel like that would be a dope T-shirt. Hi, hello, hey, and then maybe a picture of you. Ooh, we should design that. Yeah, because somebody's supposed to be getting our merch together. Somebody asked for the logo. Yeah, whatever. All right, multiple so we're gonna take. We gonna, hasn't received it. Not multiple. That's your I opinionated go, truth. I e- That's your opinionated <laughs> truth, but it's I not the actual have truth. Record where I went to our designer Missy and told her that I'm probably going to need you to send it to me because the person who lives with me has still yet to send it. Because oh, okay. you kept asking me 511 questions. Why do you need a logo? Blah 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 blah. blah. And I just wanted it. I just like this could have been a rushed vibes mug sitting in yeah. front of you instead of a killing it mug. But anyway. Anyways, well, real quick before we take a break, what are you drinking? It is daytime, so I'm drinking this like new digestive ginger tea because mm. ginger is just supposed to be good with like getting. So you're gonna be you're gonna be boo booing here pretty no, soon. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, but it does have Burn. a quote. It says, "Bring me the sunset in a cup." Emily and, Dickinson. And it's sun and it's sunshine outside right now. Sunshine. And I've got a cup. And she's got a cup. Uh, I'm drinking peppermint tea. So we're daytime. We want to be responsible. Uh, we don't want y'all talking about us. So we're not drinking any alcoholic we beverages during the day. Yeah, we, we really don't. But be respectful because I know my mom's watching. We were drinking tea. You're kidding me, so. right? <laughs> my mama watches, so we're drinking tea, mom. So, all right, uh, we'll be back first break, and then we'll we'll get into uh, our review. What's up, Vibe Tribe? It's us. It's us. And we are here with a fun announcement. We've been joking around for a while about just having a sponsor or just putting a commercial into our breaks. And here we have one. Our friends at Married and Having Fun are hosting their very first In Touch Marriage Retreat. What, what? We are find the timing to be absolutely perfect because we have been talking about relationships and entanglement. So why not take this opportunity to reconnect with your spouse and God at on an extended weekend, extended weekend (laughs) to think big 
with Big Thinkers. So taking place next month, June 10th to the 13th in Lake Junaluska, North Carolina, right outside Asheville. Beautiful, beautiful place. Awesome, all inclusive marriage retreat. All your meals are included, lodging at the lovely Lamb Bath Inn, a couple's massage. Ooh, get that tension out. Uh, men and women workshops, along with a couple's photo shoot and, of course, a vow renewal. We are so privileged to be a part of this and to be advertising this to you guys. And because you are our subscribers and listeners, you get the opportunity to partake in this opportunity for a mere $450 by using our promo code Rush Vibes. vibes. So R-U-S-H-V-I-B-E-S is our promo code. If you go over to marriedandhavingfun.com, you can plug it in and you and your spouse can enjoy this wonderful retreat here in North Carolina and get reconnected with your spouse and if you search for married and having fun on instagram if you have any questions feel free to reach out to them in a dm uh they're they're really great one of our favorite podcasts to listen to uh but they're also really responsive and they'll answer any any and all questions you have so be sure to to hit them up if you uh, are interested but you just have a couple of questions that you need to get answered yes or feel free to reach out to one of us we'll be more than happy to answer no, any reach, questions reach out to jessica <laughs> reach out to me um i'd be more than happy to answer any questions i have had the pleasure of attending day retreats and overnight women's retreats um with this organization and they have been amazing and i've left feeling better about just my perspective on self and my relationship with god and life so if that's what you feel like you and your spouse are needing please don't hesitate to be a part of this we hope you'll be there. All right. Well, is that it? That's it. All right, That's cool. all I got. Now let's get back to the show. Peace. And we back. And we back. And we back. And we back again. Chance? The rapper? The rapper? <laughs> all right, so I'm just verifying here. What are you I don't, verifying? I don't believe it's you. It's run the world. Okay, just, just hold on. How am I going to put you onto something you're going to okay. fact check me? So, my opinion of the truth is that the show is called Run the World. So, it's on Stars. Uh, first episode dropped, I guess it was last week? Yes, first episode drops. Dropped last Sunday. It is a Sunday. Why are you yelling? <laughs> I'm right here. You're going to make people turn the volume down. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. That was rude of me. It is a Sunday show. It airs every Sunday. Storm. <laughs> it airs every Sunday. Too. I will not be watching it until Monday, so I'll have to make sure not to miss spoilers. Uh, stars. So, uh, so if you haven't watched the first episode, we'll try not to spoil the show, although it's pretty much just a lot of exposition setting the show up and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't watched it yet, stop listening now. Pause, rush vibes. No, I think you should go. still keep listening because then it. I don't know that we'll give enough detail that okay. it'll... Yeah, and it's not like it's a movie. It's so, not. It's so, a show and... And it, it's a first episode. It, it's ahead. a foundational first episode for you to kind of foresee where the remainder of the season is going to go. Uh, it's it's on stars personally based off of my algorithm and I assume my demographic. I saw a lot of it via Instagram and Facebook. It was, it was constantly popping up. Um, I saw it on the few... Every once in a while, I'm watching something on, like, live TV and, you know, the commercials posted. So as soon as I saw it, I, I gained interest in it and I put it, I, I registered. This is a show I kind of want to check out. I won't lie. I anticipated it to be, you know, just pure ratchetness um, and just like a typical, I, as I've said in many episodes before, uh, I think that as both black entertainment television not BET but just black entertainment television in general um it we have to be very sensitive there are certain perspectives and lifestyles that we have to be very intentional about what we put out because that's how people interpret or assume black culture is well we're getting deep here on on rush vibes you are wow, sorry i wasn't i, I wasn't I, ready for it maybe it, i should have poured some some bourbon, some go bourbon, get, go get some bourbon, some and my I'll peppermint tea. I'll hold it down for a minute. No, thank you. Um, Still tea, mom, or is it? So I, I think by default, anytime I see a show with a black cast, I always just jump to the assumption like, oh, it's gonna be, it's probably gonna be ratchet. It's probably gonna be, you know, just a bad depiction of being black in America. And I was so pleasantly surprised. And I think not only should black 
women, men, people in general that are black identifying should watch the show. But I do think that people of other races should watch the show as well. Because for me, and, and I talked with my cousin who's like my, my other. My Which one? Esquire. 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 What's up, boo? Esquire, Georgia. I ain't heard from um, you in a minute. She's Esquire now, so I don't, don't think. I, don't think because you got letters on the back of your name, you can't just you just forget I, about. I automatically, I automatically just call her Esquire. We, we need to hear from but you. That's my boo. Uh, I was actually just helping her with her grocery list. <laughs> like I literally like built her. A gro- I was like, "What's the nearest grocery store?" And I was going through the circular trying to help her um, build her grocery list. But uh, she and I were talking about it, and I love the conversation. She and I have some really good conversations when it comes to entertainment, and especially how entertainment depicts black lives. And we talked about how this is, I told her from my perspective, it's, it's a cross, but it, it's what girlfriends is for this generation, for the millennial generation. And she actually said, it's kind of a cross of girlfriends and, Oh, what's the other show? Like girlfriends living single. And there's another show. I'd probably have to pull up the text to remember. And, and, and sex in the city. And she, I felt like she was really spot on with that because one, I appreciate the fact that this takes place in Harlem and I don't know how many, if any shows I've watched or movies I've watched that have really just made Harlem look so amazing. Um, I think Sylvie's love for on Amazon prime might've been based, might've Part of it might have been filmed in Harlem or be like part of that that area of New York. But I loved that. I loved that Run the World takes place in Harlem. You've got these four women in different stages of life. They're kind I wonder of. Wonder if they'll see uh, Luke Cage. It's Harlem, right? Anyway, they're uh, they're mid. I that's think not part like, of the, that's not part of the extended universe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just playing. That, that you would know that. I'm, I'm, I'm just playing. It's don't, like early. Don't I think they're all in their early thirties. Um, I would say mid. I know one re- said something about being 31 or oh. reference 31. So I'm just assuming. But then again, I'm 31. So I just kind of assume everybody's age. You want me to read the official uh, plot for the show? Yeah, go for it. Sure. Uh, just before you get into it, I want to provide a little bit of context. So Around the World is a story of a group of black women, vibrant, fiercely loyal best friends who work, live, and play in Harlem as they strive for world domination. At its core, it's unapologetically female show about in- enviable friendship and not only surviving surviving but thriving together is that on wikipedia that is wikipedia so that's wikipedia's opinionated truth uh but no that's pretty much I mean, somebody wrote it that is pretty much it, it sums it up in a nutshell uh the first i'm the only qualm i have with this show is the fact that it's 28 minutes i'm not gonna round it up to 30 it's like 20 minutes 28 minutes and like 46 seconds which i think is is an injustice because it should you know most comedy Series are are about that thirty Isn't minutes. Insecure slot. an hour. Insecure is thirty minutes. Oh, that's why we're always able to. We were always able to run there, through it. So always, yeah, you're able to power through it because it's it's so short. Uh, well, that it, it for twenty eight minutes it packs a lot of content. Yeah. Uh, I I didn't feel I felt robbed because I wanted to keep watching it. And honestly, if I wasn't already so drawn to it, I would probably wait till at least half the season was able was on stars so I could stream it continuously but you know I, I definitely enjoyed just seeing black culture like you said ha- Harlem seems amazing just how they they depict it they had um they featured a chef Marcus Samuelson he's Ethiopian he's either Ethiopian or Somalian I believe um he's a well-renowned chef he's all over food network he has great restaurants his food is known uh so he's featured like in the opening scene like you see him they've got bevy smith bevy she's you know well known as a commentator for fashion she makes her cameo i've got her book she's been on wendy like so she they they do a great job of just like embracing blackness in a way that i feel we don't get to see a lot of the time and it's kind of the the black experience i have where you've got these women you know after work they're going they're getting drinks together they're not the stereotypical ratchet they're not the stereotypical ghetto like i don't know um you remember what happened when they went to the club to soldier boy 
the one friend. <laughs> okay. That's, I mean, I, I said stereotypical. There's still a little ratchet. Like, every, yeah. we all have a little ratchet. If you want to reference the um, the Dallas episode that we talked about, the restaurant and the DJ, yeah. and th- I, I, I already go on my tangent about ratchetness and how we all have, we all have a little ratchet in us. Um, opinionated truth. Opinionated truth is that we all have a little ratchet. Yes. Yes. Even you. Even you. You. The housewife. Yeah, I see you. Um, you want to point to your camera and say it as well? Oh, even you. <laughs> you got it in you. She's in there. That ratchet's there. Keep digging. Uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 ah, not quite, but it's there. Um, so I loved it. it gave, I was watching it with such joy. Um, you know, they're talk, perf- a, talk a little bit about, you know, how the first episode went. So it, it, it kind of it starts fast. You know, they, they're at... A restaurant they're getting like you know they're or like a lounge i think it's one of those restaurants that after hours converts into like a club lounge so there's music playing you know they're taking shots one of them talks about how she's you know engaged you know some guy grabs another one to dance on the dance floor they're just you know they're just living their life and the moment was so it was almost nostalgic like i haven't necessarily lived moments like that but it's like i could feel myself living a moment like that like i i felt represented and i could identify it as sure. opposed to you know you'll see carrie and samantha and all of them from sex in the city doing stuff like that it's like yeah, yeah black people do that too i'm sure latinas do that too i'm sure Asian, like we all we all do that we all get de- like we are all different colors but we're all american and there are certain things mm-hmm. that are american so i think it was very it was beautiful for us to be able to see ourselves in that light yeah. and i think it's great for others to see us in that light because i know someone's going to be like oh i don't know black people go out for happy hour like oh yes we do um with other black people not just like our co-workers um i would, and hope, our cubicles. I would hope that that doesn't surprise someone well you know what so side note i was working sidebar sidebar note memo uh, i was working and one of my at the time oh this was, is a story yeah at the time okay. she was a team lead nice. and she used to travel to and her mom was her assistant team lead and she used to travel to uh do grand openings for the client that i worked for and we were ta- she had gotten promoted so we were like on a team trip and she was talking and she was saying how they were in a hotel she and her mom were in a hotel and mind you she's from Oklahoma um, but she's traveled like she's worked on cruise ships she's she's white she's dated black men like she's she's all like she's lived like she's cultured so she was saying that her mom was flipping the TV in the hotel room and it got to BT and her mom said oh they have a channel wow and <laughs> they and she like she was so apologetic but she like she was trying to remind me like you know my mom's from like backwards oklahoma she like we know like maybe two black people and like they it's like in places of business like that she doesn't have any personal black friends and she was so surprised that bet was a channel and it was for black people and they have a they have so um So I do believe that there are some white people who probably don't know that like black people do do happy hour on their own. They're um, they're civilized with with other (laughs) black people. Like what do they do after work? Um, So I loved seeing that. I loved just the, 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 you had one who's, you know, kind of deviating professionally. She, she tried one venture. It didn't work. So she's, she has to pivot professionally and she's not happy about it. But then you have, um, was she Regine on Living Single? Max. 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 Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, you have you have Max from Living yeah. Single. She. Yeah. Looked, I'm impressed. I didn't yeah. know you watched Living Single. My mom watched it. We so are I went, living mm-hmm. single on a nightly kind of world. I'm glad I got my. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Okay, excuse me. So, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we Max. in here. <laughs> Lit off Max. some peppermint and ginger tea. That's right. Daytime vibes. Oh, my gosh. So, Max is in there. She she, she was a, a pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting to see her. So, it was, it was a good just ride down nostalgia lane because I feel like Living Single was really did capitalize, you know, just black female greatness in the 90s uh so she's in there and her character is fun but you know it just shows people in different parts of life you've got one girl she's engaged to a nigerian i wish he was Ghanaian, but it's okay he's nigerian um and she kind of embraces real quick 
Easter egg. Did you know one of the produce the co producer for the show Isn't actually? Nigerian? No, well maybe, but produced uh, Living Single as well. I'm not. When I saw Max, I figured yeah. I figured there was a, a Living Single connection. So yep. that that makes absolute perfect sense, and I, I'm glad to know it. So you'll you'll appreciate that in there. And I I plan to go back and watch Living Single because I was a kid when my mom was watching it. So I remember. What's his face? Who I thought was gay. Like, I think looking back, I feel like he came off as he came off. I guess he was just very, he was just very sophisticated because he had that random accent, but it wasn't an English accent. It, yeah. Anyway, um, so she's in there. Uh, you've got one girl. She's engaged. The dude's not her to like her college sweetheart. Um, he's Nigerian, and I think she's kind of going through this coming of age where she's like, you know, I have a question. Yeah. How come in all of these um, these new age uh, black shows? Whenever there's an African introduced, why are they always Nigerian? Uh, I feel, For the most part, why is it? It seems to me, and this this isn't me like complaining. I'm just mm-hmm. kind of curious. It seems like the go to. <laughs> you know, uh, I wonder that too. I would love I to feel, see like some Ghanaian. I feel or, like Niger. One, I will give Nigerians credit. Like they have credit. No, sorry, there was a joke that I was going to take, and yeah, I'm, no, I'm not trying to come from my brethren yeah, like that. Don't do that. Um, there is I, the one Nigerians have really you know stormed the entertain the American entertainment industry. So I mm. will give them credit for that. They have re- like they they were like okay cool with the doctor lawyer engineer, but now we're gonna go into to, to Do- film doctors, uh, which is great because it's leaving room for the Ghanaians to be recognized for for growth in corporate spaces as well. But uh, I think one Nigeria is is I believe if I'm not mistaken the largest. Um, country, if not in um, Western Sub-Saharan Africa, in all of Africa, uh, the population it might be the highest populated nation in in Africa as well. Uh, and I, I just think overall Nigeria has has made itself very recognizable, sure. uh, the country as a brand. So it's granted, you know, their jalaf still ain't there, but they have um, shots fired. Pew pew. Uh, vibes. And I. <laughs> wholeheartedly agree <laughs> that's right no you bias believe it. no bias oh, at all, all. all the bias uh, but, i'm not gonna sugarcoat it but i i just feel like nigeria has done a great job with its size its mass of just being well known so when it comes to soccer when it comes to you know just overall representation in medicine in film they're they're out there um yeah. Ghanaians are there too but nigerians have really infiltrated a lot of spaces so i give them credit for that and yeah, i do I'll appreciate be. them for that um yeah. because they're they're definitely giving a lot of recognition to west africa ghana is doing its thing um you know there every country has its its strengths and its weaknesses especially uh african and developing nations so i think ghana is quickly recognized like if you tell someone ghana like people light up i remember i went to the dominican republic and the guy asked me where i was from and i was like american he kept looking at me like okay sis so i said ghana and he was like oh god he like lit oh ghana i want to go to god i was like dude what you what you, you want to go yeah, to ghana? i mean we uh we, i put up a, a post on social media the other day that uh we plan on going to ghana in 2020 as uh, uh, what i didn't say was as a family as in me jessica and our two daughters but the apparently, residents of this house. yeah, uh, we had some family members, extended family members who like jumped in. I guess they want to make like a group thing out of it, which is cool. Um, I'm glad that there's interest like in just Africa, mm-hmm. and, but also in, in Ghana, because it's been, you know, kind of all the rage lately. You know, they did their the year of return a couple of years ago. Um, and they're still returning. And they're like, still returning. We just and they, keep, like, they, keep they coming labeled back. it beyond the return. For, Every year. They're so, like, COVID, who, COVID who? We just going to yeah. keep returning. Come keep on, coming come back. Come on home. Come on home. So, yeah, it's uh, that was pretty cool. But, yeah, yeah there's definitely a growing uh, recognition of Ghana. And then also just a, a general excitement when you talk about, like, visiting and things to do in Ghana. Yeah. And, it's very beautiful if you, so, if you yeah. follow it. Twitter just put its African headquarters in Ghana. Shout out to Jack Dorsey. Um, put it in Accra, which I wish they had put in Kumasi because they put in everything in Accra. Yeah, Accra is about to be like... Accra is... About to be in there fighting for elbow room. Accra is Accra. so overcrowded. So I'm like, if for any reason I have a corporation that I am taking to Ghana, I'm not putting it in Accra because it just it's just too much. Like, we, we need to go elsewhere. Comfort and power entertainment. Um, come LL- through. LLC. So, so, but yeah, I do appreciate, you know, my Nigerian... Brethren and sis- sistren, uh, <laughs> uh, because they're doing great things. And when one one African nation is thriving and and, and bring attention to high the tide, continent, high tide raises all, all boats. We rise together. Only thing I'm upset with is you know 
the the basketball league in Africa does not have a team out of Ghana. I'm, this hurts my spirit so much. Uh, I just don't understand why Ghana would not have a basketball team. But you know that's that's for when I get to the right boardroom and I have the right conversation. Um, but anyway, so back to the show. Back to the show. Her fiance is her. Um, college sweetheart he happens to be nigerian so she's talking about you know wedding planning and you know how her soon-to-be mother-in-law wants her to put a gele which is a, a nigerian headpiece um we wear them in ghana too uh but it's 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 rooted it's from nigeria they're beautiful oh my gosh they're gorgeous when they're put on um wants her to put it on and she's she was like uh i'm paying 300 dollars for my my updo and she wants me to wrap it with this this sheet essentially uh and it's way more than that but uh so it's like it's nice to see other cultural perspectives you got one who's dating a man who's got a daughter and she's all for like the people and just black love and she ends up i don't want to put too much out there but she the, her the her not stepdaughter but her boyfriend's daughter goes to a dance school and you know someone says something crazy and she was like okay i'm pulling this child out and it's like this is not your child to pull out but um she does it anyway and then you have you know one who is allegedly married but they haven't they haven't gone into her character development you know it is funny the opening scene where it's like the show is actually starting she's at a bodega she's trying to get breakfast and this white lady is like just can't see her okay. um, and just keeps like bumping into her and standing in front of her and her sandwiches. She, she finally snaps and just starts, you know, Maya Angelouing her. And it's just like, I am a phenomenal woman. <laughs> <laughs> and the sad thing is I'm sure this white woman has absolutely no clue why this lady went off. And I kind of wish she had been able to go into more context and be like, you have been ignoring me and bumping into me for the past five minutes. And yeah. I need you to recognize that I'm here. And then she could have gone into the phenomenal woman speech, but it was it was funny regardless and as the viewer you understand it and you get it so i love the show i feel like this foundational um premiere episode really set a great bar and i i know but i said it how i wanted to say it but that's your opinionated opinionated truth truth thank you um so i just hope that i hope that none of the writers got fired i hope that everyone kept their job um so why would they have gotten fired i don't know people do stuff and say stuff and you know quit um because i want i want the caliber to stay the same it is a show on stars so be prepared like don't watch it with your kids around you're gonna hear cuss words you're gonna see butt cheeks you're gonna see several butt cheeks several butt cheeks you're gonna see boot like you're you're gonna have there's there are explicit scenes but i mean anything on stars like if you watched power like you should it's not surprising at all. Uh, but my opinion is I think it's a great show. It's it's perfectly timed. Uh, it's not overwhelming. It's not heavy. And I think we need good black tea entertainment that's not heavy. That sure. lets us see the joys of life. Sure. Of black life. Sure. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. And if you watch carefully, <laughs> a random Easter egg, there is an advertisement for the show in, in the, the show. show. Yeah. I, and that's, that's actually pretty cool. It's cute. I like that they did that. Your turn. Um, Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of thoughts different or separated from, from everything you said. Obviously, anytime you get a chance to uh, find new uh, black shows, uh, shows that tell stories from uh points characters who aren't usually featured and highlighted in most mainstream shows so i love the fact that there's a a series a black comedy series that's just all black women um and like you said it isn't it isn't building upon stereotypes it's just three you know or four excuse me four four uh professionals um who are you know living in in harlem and going through day-to-day things and 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 struggles and big decisions and, and things that most people just deal with in their everyday life so it's it's nice uh it was it was definitely a, a good vibe it's produced very well uh directed very well um pretty pretty funny uh, i i <laughs> i laugh uh find myself laughing quite a bit and uh you know I, was, I went in blind i didn't really have any kind of context just told me to just watch it so i watched it so yeah, I'm I'm a fan. I I enjoy it. I think maybe now it's something that we'll watch together. Now that we've each watched it and we're uh, we're impressed or enjoyed it mm-hmm. enough. But yeah, I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for uh, more more black stories being told. And there's diversity because the one girl took an Asian guy home. Yeah, or went home with an Asian guy. Oh yeah, she went to his place. Yeah. So uh, 
Uh, yeah, if you haven't watched it yet, or if you don't have, if you haven't been aware of it, if it hadn't hit your radar, it's called Around the World. It's on Stars. If you have Hulu and you have the Stars package via Hulu, it, you can watch it there. And then um, I think new episodes every Sunday. So um, definitely go check it out and let us know what you think. If you've watched it, let us know what you think. And mm-hmm. if you haven't watched it and you end up watching it, circle back and let us know what you think as well. And you know, start a dialogue on it. Yeah. So anything else on it? No, I just enjoyed it. I th- yeah. Do you, I recognize two of the actresses. I don't know where I recognize them from. And I think the other two, they might just be newcomers, maybe Broadwayers. No, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not familiar. The one who's engaged, I recognize her. And then the one who is a phenomenal woman, I recognize her, <laughs> but I can't place, I can't place either of them. So maybe yeah, during the break, sure. I'll look them up and see where I'll IMDB them and see where I can, where I remember them from. But the other two, I can't recognize, but cool. I, I appreciate their, their chemistry. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we'll take a quick break. We'll be back, and then we'll uh, we'll jump into our next subject. Peace. All right, back in it. Like we never left. Because we didn't. Because we didn't. We just took a break. We're here at Rush Vibes Studios. In the afternoon. This is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I feel like I have, which is easy to understand, but I feel like I have way more energy in the afternoon than... 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which I guess is, is most people. And we're always like, oh, we're going to get the girls to bed early and then we're going to record. And then by the time we sit down, it's like 11. 11. And I just don't understand how yeah. we went from getting everyone to bed early to 11. Yeah. But the next topic that I wanted us to discuss, something I also discussed with my cousin, Esquire. Uh, Esquire. I thought we were going to jump into my topic. Oh yeah. Okay. No, nah, we're not. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, 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 Okay. Two people's mother, actually. And the dick pic pastor is two people's father. <laughs> anyway, um, that was like three episodes ago. You guys can go listen to us talking about the pastor who dropped a dick pic okay. in DMs. All right. Anyway. Goodness gracious. So I was talking to my cousin, who has just become my secondary entertainment voice like conversational voice i don't know we get on the most interesting topics and we just keep going and it's really exhausting because we're texting and then i try to switch to my keyboard but my macbook keyboard is like janky so it's just anyway um and we were talking about streaming services and we were trying to figure out like we come back and forth to each other like oh what are you watching what are you watching what should i watch um and i share stuff with her so like i shared run the world with her and then she watched it um and she shares stuff with me and right now we're on like a south african kick so we're trying to find stuff that are on netflix that are from south africa so we've watched um We've watched, we both watched Blood and, I think it's Blood and Fire, Fire and Water. One of those two combinations. It's a South African sounds show. Sounds like something from Game of, sounds like a Game of Thrones episode. It does, but <laughs> it's not. It's a South African show. It's really, really good. It won a SAFTA award. Um, and yeah, I know a thing or two. No, I'm um, surprised that it won, won yeah. an award. Uh, it won a SAFTA award and it's, it's Don't just. Don't pat yourself on the back too. I'm about to get my Nancy. Thank you. Uh, and it's just a really good quality show because we were talking, we got on a tangent about um, there's this app. I had shared an article with her talking about, you know, just, you know, people's issues with, you know, trauma porn and, and just black entertainment as a whole and how it depicts itself. We also discussed that on an episode of Rush Vibes when we reviewed um, Two Distant Strangers. We did. So I read this article and I got sw- it directed me to an app that this young woman had created. I believe the app is called Quelly, um, K W E L I. Uh, and I was interested in it. They had shows from different countries in Africa. They had a few American shows, probably like small. It reminds me of that one app that, uh, was popular during the pandemic, but got, is it quick Quibi? Quibi. Quibi, but got like canceled. Um, but this one required a subscription. It shut shut down and didn't get canceled. Oh, canceled. I mean, can you you gotta be careful when you say stuff gets canceled? canceled. It's, it got shut down. The volatile they lost these their days. money because they weren't making money. Yeah. Um, so it reminded me of Quibi. And then we got into the conversation because it was another subscription. I think it was either five ninety nine a month or it might have been 
seventy dollars a year. I can't remember whatever five ninety nine times twelve is. Uh, and we were like, I'm so tired of subscription services. Like, I don't want to have to keep if I want to watch something. I don't want to have to keep signing up for subscription services. And you know, it, it the conversation segued into how overwhelming it is and how you know you have all these networks and all of these networks have their own individual subscription app service. So you you need to download the app and then you need to on top of that, keep track of what app has what show because, you know, you've got the mainstream shows and then the apps have their own exclusive shows. And then you've got like Hulu that has other people's content that are on their apps, but then also has its own content. And then you have Netflix. So, you know, for me, the Netflix effect is I want to watch something, open up the next Netflix app and I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling. And then it's like, am I in the mood to watch this? Am I not? Is this something I should watch later? Can I watch this with the kids around? Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. 30, 40 minutes later, I've just been scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and I haven't been able to settle on one thing to watch. And again, these are first world champagne problems, but it's so overwhelming to have so many options. They're just, it, there are so many places and you cannot keep track of, you know, I was watching this. Is it? I was even talking to my mom about it. She was saying she was trying to find a show and she couldn't remember if it was on Amazon Prime or if it was on Hulu or if it was on Netflix. And she couldn't remember enough about the show to just do a blanket search for the show. So I think who merged? Was it AT and T and Disney and Time Warner? Somebody recently merged. And AT and T and Time Warner. AT and T and Time Warner. They, they recently are merging that with uh, Discovery. Okay, so. I, part of me supports this because I feel like maybe they can all come together and just drop one app because you got Disney plus then, you know, I don't even know why discovery felt the need to come up with their own app with the same HGTV shows and food network. And it's just, it's exhausting. And I'm like, when the things that the government actually needs to step in on, like, you know, justice and racial equality. And then also all of these apps and streaming services, it's just, in my opinion, okay, uh, let, me, let me, let me, let me, let me, <laughs> It's too much. Let me give me a 30 second time out. Let me get it. Let me get a 30. Okay. Number one and only number one, please do not, please do not compare your streaming service anxiety with racial. I'm not comparing just, it. I'm saying and, this and needs to be equality. on the list No, you of said things that the government needs to step in and then you, you're literally only two examples <laughs> were racial equality and streaming services. Because you were get, I knew you were going to cut me off. They also need to step in with education no, no, and no, no, healthcare no, no, reform. No, 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 but no, no, I'm not here on a political tip. Like that's not, that's not what the tip I'm on. I just feel like they really need to, like there are too many, like so, even with apps so on So number, phones. So number, number one, as with all mergers for the most part, um, this will, it is pending regulators' approval. So the government will have their say in, in whether or not uh, AT&T and, and Discovery are able to merge the, the Time Warner business with Discovery. Mm -hmm. So the government will will look at it. Well, thanks, Uncle Sam. I just think it's so, it, it defeats the purpose. Because, you know, when we first got into this eight years ago, when apps started to come out and, you know, cutting the cord became the, the trending statement. We were doing this to save money because we were tired of paying, you know, a hundred dollars for just cable with, you know, 500 channels that you don't get to watch because you're flip, you're flipping around going through TV guide and you can't decide on something to watch. So then Netflix came and then Hulu came and there were a couple, you know, live streaming services, but there were to its core, there were probably about six that yeah. was manageable. That was comfortable. Um, you could not saying that you didn't have moments of being overwhelmed, but it was easy to navigate that. Now here we are, all the networks that we were trying to get away from have come up with their own apps and they all want to charge four ninety nine. And if you're not if you're not thinking about it, four ninety nine, five ninety nine doesn't sound like a lot, but four ninety nine, five ninety nine times ten other subscription services you're ultimately paying more than you're paying for cable and so it's like well man maybe i need to cut the apps and go back to cable it's just everyone doesn't need to have an app or a streaming service like all of these it, it i know i'm frustrated i've been trying to watch the last season of queen sugar queen sugar airs on own um i have access to spectrum i can't watch episodes Ac access to but doesn't access pay for 
I didn't say I didn't pay for it. No, oh, if for you me. if you paid for something, you would say I pay for it. You don't say I have access. I to have it. access to own, and I have access to Spectrum. You don't pay for um, it. So the own app has Cheap. episode one of the last season of Queen Queen Sugar season five, and then doesn't have any new episode any of the middle episodes up until episode five. So I haven't been able to watch two, three, and four. Oh, so yeah. then. I went to Hulu, which has seasons one through four of Queen Sugar, but doesn't have season five of Queen Sugar. Then I went to Amazon Prime that has seasons one through five, but wants me to pay two ninety nine to watch episodes two, three, and four. And with each week that I wait, another episode gets removed from the own app from the the um, the Spectrum app, and it's like. Y'all, this isn't fair. I'm already paying for access in some way to these apps. Why do I have to go to Prime and pay two ninety nine? So now I have to wait until Hulu either gets all of season five or Oprah, who I've tweeted, decides that she's going to open the beginning episodes. And I'm like, what? Did y'all run out of space? Open the vault. Open Oprah. the vault. Give me my episodes. I'm trying to watch them. So it's just obno- like Open it's, the vault. it's obnoxious to me. Like uh, it's just too much. And then people keep coming out with shows, and it's like, I want to watch this show. Where is it? I can't find it. Uh, it. It's just you know, for someone who's very indecisive and struggles to sometimes make decisions. When I'm ready to make a decision, I don't want it to be difficult when I'm choosing. When I've decided. Again, champagne, first world problems, but they're just, it's too much. There's too much. There's too many. And then they wonder why people are sharing passwords. And now Netflix want to try and get all shysty, talk about we're going to verify your location. No, no, you're not going to verify my location. You're going to let me do what I'm doing. Actually, they, they will verify your location. I'm telling them my opinionated truth. You don't, you'll you don't have the right to do this. and truthful without Netflix. You don't have the right happen. to do this. It's, it's, it's an, an invasion of my, one of my civil liberties. No, it definitely They isn't. need to amend something. <laughs> it's definitely because not. Because tru- it's, just, it's just becoming too much. And then, you know, it's also, I know people have been questioning in terms of awards. Like, should Netflix, movies that are posted on, are put on Netflix, should they be considered for, you know, Academy Awards and, and, and Golden Globes and all of these things. So it's just, you know, People are, I know some, there's a b- debate about, you know, respecting the, the art and the craft and where it's put out. Like if it goes into theaters, is it more admirable than something that's dropped on Netflix? So, you know, it's just, I don't know. I've heard different things. I know myself personally, I feel like there are too many options. Um, mm. It's it's definitely overwhelming. And there's no, just like I used to say with Spotify and with Pandora, like there's no personality assessment that i can fill out for you to be able to gate like why can't you just like put something on the remote to gauge my like my mood and then be able to figure out what i want (laughs) what i want to watch like we're such an advanced society you guys can't figure this out um or let me take a personality assessment and then you know send things my way that interest me but that actually would be pretty cool i think it would be i used to want someone with like a a wearable and gauge your what yeah like a mood ring Get, what mood am i in you know how, where's my blood pressure what can i handle right now um and then you know suggest something like that i know netflix does have the you know like the random play feature now i've yet to use it because i don't know what's gonna pop up and i'm you know got kids um but it's just you know i felt that way about you know music sometimes i don't know what i want to listen to and the effort of trying to figure out like one artist and then when you pick one artist they usually play that artist more as opposed to like mixing in other artists so you're just like if i put in a drake song i am just gonna keep hearing drake and i'm like well maybe i wanted to hear one drake song for inspiration and then you're supposed to figure out an algorithm to <laughs> to get the rest of what i want to listen to yeah you know, I, when i want to be inspired i i too listen to drake look started from the bottom now we're, now we're here. Now we're here. That's inspiring. It is very. That's much motivational. So. so that's just where that's just where I stand. This is where government uh. intervention is needed. <laughs> um, I have thoughts. I know you do. So we were we were uh, we pioneered. We were at, at the cutting edge of you pioneered. Of, I, just, uh, I just went with the flow. Of, of cutting the cord and what a lot of people called out then and what is starting to become apparent to a lot of people who didn't realize what was what 
what eventually happening, didn't see the writing on the wall, is that it's really just cable in a different package, right? Like there's really only like a handful of companies who own all the individual studios or have controlling stake in a lot of different studios and therefore control or have a very um, strong influence on the kind of content that gets put mm-hmm. on these uh on these on these apps and services and whatnot so nothing really changed uh it just it was bundled it was presented in a different package right you uh you give people the impression that they have choices or, or more choices or more power and really you know they don't i mean you do like you don't have like we don't subscribe to traditional cable or or satellite television service and yet we're still able to watch pretty much everything that we are interested in. Um, so whether it be Netflix, whether it be Amazon, whether it be Hulu, whether it be, <clears throat> excuse me, whether it be Showtime, HBO, whatever, we can watch whenever we want to watch. And I think uh, knowing that, kind of like with the invention of the DVR, knowing that you can watch something later, you don't have to catch it in real time. Otherwise it's, it's gone. It's in the vault <laughs> or you have to wait until the end of the season and you get a, a season set of DVDs or VHSs um, for back in the day. Not, not now. I mean, queen sugar acting like they need <laughs> to do this. So. Um, you know, people say, Oh, I can just watch it later. I can watch it when it's convenient, co- convenient for me. But then you forget. So no, you don't forget because if you want to stuff is coming out like the whole. So I know I'll cut you off, but sorry. Uh, so like I used to watch the shy and I don't know how I forgot I lost a whole season of The Shy, and now they've add like they just started the news the newest season. So now I'm like a season and three episodes behind. I completely forgot about it because so many other things came out. So I'm like, how do I keep track? I need I literally need to keep a journal of what to watch so that I can remember to keep. I used to put it in my planner, and even that was overwhelming. But sorry, I don't understand. I don't. I don't think that this is a problem. It I is think, a problem. No, I think. With things, with the with cord cutting, and with a lot of these different services, and with Netflix, you know, going with all original content for the most part, uh, majority original content now, it's giving people opportunities that didn't have them, you know, prior Mm -hmm. to this this change. So, you know, on one hand, it's kind of hard to say, I hate being locked in the cable. Well, really only wanting five channels and then paying for having to pay for 200 and then it going up every year. And, and then at the same time, your things are, are a little bit more um, individualized. And then you get more, uh, you get more shows, more new shows, more new creators, more new producers, more new directors and actors who are getting opportunities on some of these platforms, like the app that you talked about, you and Georgia were speaking of. Um, and yeah, they need to, it needs to be a subscription because they need to get, they need to generate revenue. Like everything costs money. <laughs> like yeah, nobody, know, no, 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 no. Let me finish. Tupac. Poetic justice. <laughs> Poetic justice. Dope short, by the way. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, that's just the, the, re- that's just a model that, that everybody is trending toward because it, it works. And you, like you said, you, four ninety nine. you think, oh, that's not bad. You know, they know that the, the decision makers, the people in marketing, the product managers, they don't, you put out a good product and you give it to somebody for four ninety nine, they they're going to eat it up. Especially if the content is, is good and you've got it, you've got a hit show. People will literally subscribe to whole services for like one show. Like when we subscribed to stars, it was just for power, mm-hmm. but there are, there are other, but then you get into, um, what was the show about the foot, the, the football kid, uh, the guy, he was a full, he was like a receiver and then he had his whole family. Um, Wasn't he basketball? Oh. Or basketball. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, re- remorse. Uh, survivor's, survivor's remorse. Survivor's remorse. You watched it, but then you stumble onto all these other shows and then that helps and keep you. And then forgot about survivor's remorse. Well, I got canceled. Oh. So, um, yeah, I, I don't really feel overwhelmed. Uh, there are times where I go on Netflix. I'm like, I need to watch something or I want to watch something. I sit down and I'm like, whoo. Goodness, like what? What do I watch? Because there's so much. That's a real thing. But really, all that tells me is that I just don't need to be watching. So I need to get up and be productive, <laughs> rather than sitting on Netflix being distraught at how many options uh, there are of something to watch. So I think, uh, you know, yes, there are there are a lot of options out there in terms of entertainment packages to subscribe to. And yes, if you if you aren't careful, you'll subscribe to a handful and look up, and you're basically paying for cable, like mm-hmm. you were you know, six, seven, eight years ago. So yeah, I mean, 
but as you said, password sharing is a thing. Um, I never said that. Yeah, you did. I said having access. Oh, I'm sorry. Having a- you having access to. I us. personally, I might have mentioned other people using passwords, <laughs> but I just have access. Anyway, it's a thing, and who knows how much longer it will be a thing. But um, you know, it's there. Are, there are ways around uh, paywalls. You know, whether it's you, somebody else paying for it and, and including you on their family, mm-hmm. you know, as a part of the membership or, or whatnot. But I personally, I don't have a problem. I mean, we have what we subscribe to. I think we've got it to like, uh, we've got to like three or four, three or four apps. We don't even pay for AT&T or HBO Max because we have AT&T for internet service. Mm-hmm. So it's not. Yeah, but then they do that too. And don't you, HBO went from HBO Go to HBO Max and literally so, shows the same content. No, it's both. so, yeah, they, they had. They, they don't have, in my opinion, they don't have great people. They don't have great decision makers who are in charge of their, their streaming apps because, yeah, they went from like, at one point they had like three or four different services um, and they really didn't make it clear what was different about each one. Mm-hmm. Now I think things are moving a little bit more. I think, they're, I think they're a little bit more centralized. They may still offer like a live TV service, but I just, we just roll with Max. So we, yeah, we, we have like three or four that we pay for and that's kind of it. Um, we, anything we want to watch you know, usually falls within those apps. And if it doesn't, you know, we'll find a way to watch it. And then if there's always like a, a free trial or whatever, you just create yeah. an email address and then delete it. <laughs> there's a show on BET called bigger that I want to watch, uh, but I'm trying to, it's BET plus or BET something. And yeah, BET they plus. have a seven day subscription. Yeah. So I need to time it so that I can binge watch both, se- both seasons go. in seven days. There you go. Um, but yeah. Definitely champagne problems. It is. So we'll... So, um, let's have a toast. All right. So we'll take one last break and then we'll come back for our our final topic and then we will be out of here. Vibing on a Sunday. So we'll be right back. And we back. I'm not going to... I'm not going to... Maybe you should just get the rights to that game. song so we can just play it when we come back. From Chance? The rapper? <laughs> All right, man. So... We're going to be real quick with this, I think. Maybe we won't. Uh, we're nearing an hour, and I, I, I like that we are, have trended a little shorter with the, the last couple of episodes. But uh, I was on Twitter, mm. which is usually a bad, uh, a bad recipe, um, a rep- recipe for disaster. I think this was Saturday, either Friday night or Saturday. Mm. And I don't follow a lot. Of people on Twitter, I think I only follow about 185 people. Um, people from NBA, like reporters, journalists, things like that, personalities. So follow, follow some uh, financial Twitter people, you know, just to see what's going on with you know the cryptocurrencies and really and, and all that. And then um, I follow my my little brother Alan, who is about 80 percent of the reason a lot of the ratchetness and trash and just ridiculousness makes it onto my timeline. So. I plan on shout out him that when he sends something to me, I'm just not gonna open it. <laughs> he keeps he keeps me abreast of everything going on in in the corner of Twitter that is Black Twitter. So uh, he actually didn't share this tweet with me, but he had he had tweeted something about um, Aeropostale or saying that the Aeropostale conversation was interesting. It sounds like Aeropostale. Like I hadn't even I uh, for, forgot that the brand existed. To be honest with you, I I think I had like four month period in my life where I wore Aeropostale, but then kind of moved on to different things. So I, I search Twitter Aeropostale and sure enough, it pops up. It's basically trending at the time that I look at it. So there was, um, there was a young woman, I'm assuming young woman who went on a date, blind date, either a blind date or, or a first date. You know, I don't know how you people meet each other these days. I've, <laughs> I've been off the market for a while, but it was on a date. And I think obviously it was the first time that they had gone on a date with, with a guy and she was clowning him because he had an Aeropostale shirt on and she, and her tweet, I can't remember verbatim. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen after um, we, we finished shooting, but basically like y'all, I can't believe this dude is in here with the Aeropostale shirt. Like I'm going to be miserable forever. I'm never going to find a good man or whatever. Literally took a picture. She didn't take a picture of his face, but basically he had from his, his uh, top of his chest, you know, down to basically his torso. Um, so she could make sure that we saw that it was Aeropostale shirt and was clown and, and clown dude for having a shirt on. And by therefore that, I guess that just disqualified him from being a potential 
you know, romantic interest for her. And that was it. We don't know how the, we don't know how the day went. I didn't, I didn't investigate any further. I just kind of looked at the conversation happening around the post and it grew to pretty big. I, even to the point where I think she, she ended up making her page private <laughs> because people were going in on her and this, it, it, it put me in a mood because one, um, in one, one way, it just reaffirms that I am so grateful. I think baby Jesus every day that this is not something that I have to deal with. Baby no, baby. Like I, I, I hold him up <laughs> because I have been off the market for seven years. Seven years, I haven't had to worry about is this chick gonna take a picture of my shirt and then roast me I'm on social media? Me. Because we'll talk about the growth that I've gone through in terms of fashion, and, and y'all will commend Jessica and tell her how, how good of a woman she is. And I'll even say it because your boy was dressing kind of <laughs> back in the day. But anyways, back to it, it, like I just don't understand like why would you put like if you want to say if you want to put the tweet out like man this dude because everybody has those things that are particular to them. They have their particulars, right? Mm -hmm. You have your, your, your must haves and your, and your don't do's Mm -hmm. and however pretentious and shallow they may seem to someone who isn't you, everybody has the right to have their things, but he doesn't know that it's your first date. So why would you blast him on social media to your hundreds or thousands of followers when dude was just trying to meet somebody who he could eventually, hopefully, you know, become one with and, and, and see where the relationship goes. It's just foul. And it's not, it's not fair. And I would say the same thing if a dude did it to a, to a woman. And me personally, I think it's hella shallow because you don't know what that man's financials look like. Mm-hmm. You don't know what kind of, uh, of uh, romantic, if he's romantic or not. You don't know if, if he, you know, what he does in his community. You don't know what he does for work. Like you have... N- you don't know him. You don't know him. It's your first time. You're sitting down for the first time and you've automatically eliminated what could could have potentially been a great man for you because he has on a shirt from a brand that you may feel is is beneath you or beneath your class or isn't for grown men. Now, I also recognize on this other flip side of the coin, he could be trash and he could be a bum, but we don't know. We don't, we'll never know because of the shirt he was wearing. So I just think, You know, if you're going to have your thing, I know we're in the age now where everything goes on social media. Everybody wants to go viral. Everybody wants to get one over on somebody. But, yo, come on, man. Like, dudes just out here trying to find, trying to find love, trying to find somebody to date. You know, and and you're going to flame him on Twitter, try to make fun of him on Twitter. And I think it it backfired a little bit because obviously she had to go, she had to go private. Um, So I, I, I. understand her right to have her opinion on whether or not she wants to date someone who would wear a certain brand. Like I said, as shallow as that seems to me, that's her right. But you don't need to put it on Twitter. You don't need to take a picture of him and put it on Twitter. Like that's something that you could put in the group chat with your girlfriends or something. Like it doesn't need to go on, on social media. So I just wish people would, would do better and be better and stop trying to just be better. So now Maybe the reason why I'm so upset about this is because I was that guy who couldn't dress and didn't put any effort into dressing. Y'all, for anybody who knows us and follows us on social media, you know of the infamous sweatpants picture. And I haven't decided if I'm going to put it up yet. But maybe I should. I want y'all to see how far I've come. I've come a long way. And this woman right here, to my right, <laughs> has been here through it all. You want to talk about starting from the bottom? She was in the she was in the gutter with me when I was wearing uh, basketball shorts, quarter high socks, and flip flops to dates, while she's <laughs> like a dressing, had a dressing heels on. And what it was is I was just. I just, I'm socially awkward and I had no, I put no effort into my appearance because I was like, Hey, I'm a great guy. So it doesn't matter if I'm wearing, if I'm wearing socks with flip flops to dates, 
Who's going to Applebee's? <laughs> getting the two for 20. What does it matter? But, you know, I, uh, I noticed eventually <laughs> that my, wife, my girlfriend at the time was putting some serious effort into how she dressed. And though she wasn't saying anything, I think because we were in the honeymoon, kind of that honeymoon phase. And um, I think she realized my overall, the qualities I had overall, despite my um, inefficiencies when it comes to threads. She uh, didn't really say anything. But eventually I, I kind of just I, I became self-aware and I realized, you know, this isn't really a good look one for me and for her. I don't want people talking about her like, why is she with this dude? And I don't want people thinking, you know, negatively upon her, but also myself. You know, it's it's I, uh, I, I don't want. I feel like people shouldn't give others the, you know, all the power, like what what people think of you to be so, so important to you that it becomes like controlling and you're always, you know, self sabotaging or always second guessing yourself, but how you put yourself out into the world is important. I, I do agree with that. So, um, I, I, I took notice and then I started taking an interest in, you know, just dressing better, not like wearing designer or whatnot, but just putting on a nice pair of jeans, pair of slacks some decent shoes, top, whatever. Um, all that has since gone away during the pandemic. Now all I wear is sweats and, and graphic t-shirts because I'm in the house, but you know, once I step back out, you know, I have to put the put the house slippers back in the closet. But I just think one as a society, we're, we're too focused on trying to make fun of someone. I think we have some superficial uh, beliefs, material beliefs. We put too much emphasis on material and designer and this and that. Um, and then also, I don't think we give enough, we don't have, we don't give enough opportunity to give people grace to grow, mm -hmm. you know, like we don't give, uh, we don't know how to have those conversations, crucial conversations where it's like, Hey, I noticed like, well, why do you, you know, do you have, like, we, we don't know how to approach a conversation where you find out why somebody makes the dressing, the wardrobe decisions that they make, maybe because they, no one ever taught them. They didn't have an example or they may not have the, the money to, or they may think they don't have the money to dress like my pastor. You, if you ever saw him out in public, you would think this dude <laughs> like shopped in all of the top top thread stores and express and all that. And he will be the first to tell you, nah, he gets all of his clothes from Goodwill and the Salvation Army. Like he thrift shops for all of his clothes, but he looks so fly. Shout out to Morris. Pastor Morris, excuse me. So, you know, but you would never you would never know that if you if you didn't ask him, you would just assume like, oh man, this dude must have you know, money, you know, all over the place. He must be shopping at all the fly spots. Nah, he just dude knows how to dress, and he knows how to do so affordably. So, I just I cringe when I see stuff like that because it's not fair to the person you're taking a picture of because obviously you're meeting them for the first time and you haven't put in the effort and the work to get to know know them to understand why they've made the decisions that they make, but also how someone dresses isn't all of who that person is. Mm -hmm. um, and we just need to stop being so superficial and just, you know, understand that people are a lot more than the clothes that they wear. That's my piece. Truth. I don't have much to add. Um, I will say I am, I too, I too. I too <laughs> am glad that, um, all of this is behind me. Um, <laughs> and yeah, da like Dave fashion, fashionably, David had to come, he had to come away. So. A long way. And then, um, and then some, and I had to be very patient. Uh, it did. I don't, don't, don't think it didn't bother me, but I mean, I come from a background where, you know, my dad, if he's picking me up from school, sh show up with a three piece suit for early dismissal. If he's flying somewhere, he's wearing a vest. Like, so like, perception is very big for me when david first told me about the incident <coughs> excuse me uh i i, I and i i didn't know our apostle was still a store i don't frequent the mall um especially since the mall near us is always getting shot up um i don't, don't exaggerate is frequently getting shot up. Don't exaggerate. Uh, and then the other mall near us gets, <laughs> gets shot up too um so i don't and i'm not really a mauler i don't like shopping uh so you don't like shopping? I like shopping. I don't like shopping in person. No. Okay. Uh, and I don't like shopping the, the, for clothes. The Amazon, the Amazon delivery guy. I don't would, like shopping for clothes. We'll say that. Anyway, um, I I 
think I've stepped into an Aeropostale a couple of times, and that was usually with, you know, some friends who were white um, because Aeropostales never fit me well. Um, I think I got one pair of jeans, and then my hips popped, so I could never wear them again. <laughs> um, I'm so glad that your hips popped. Thanks. Um, I love your hips. And then I know Hollister because they're always spraying. Like they're, I know your they're hips on are a, fantastic. Anyway, they're on a schedule to spray like perfume or cologne at the door. Um, but I don't. I don't know much. I have one Aeropostale hoodie, and that's David's. That I think like it's like it's like a four X. No, it's American Eagle. Oh, it's American. Oh, yeah, about the that. jeans were American Eagle. They were not Aeropostale. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I, it's not a store that I feel, my demographic, I feel I can fit in. So I don't bother with that store. So when he said it, I think I had like forced to imagine what the shirt would look like. I was thinking like a basic t-shirt that just said, you know, Aeropostale. So I was like, okay, cool. Um, but there are some parameters that go into that. Where's the date? Blah, blah, blah. And then he showed me it. And I will say it's a more urban Aeropostale shirt like it was striped it had it said New York it said Aeropostale it said New York so I feel like once you put New York on something you urbanized it um it was blue and yellow like a blue and and honey gold it was striped so it was like yeah, it, yellow so, stripes blue and stripes was, and then there was some red in there it was a polo it, it, was, a it, was, polo. Nice, it was a nice so polo when I when I what I initially pictured was just a t-shirt like, with like, like a, a graphic tee yeah with yeah. like a big obnoxious logo and then he showed me it dude the guy had a chain um he looked from what you could see he's wearing a mask um he he looked clean he looked like he put it didn't look like a shirt like he just put on it actually looked intentional and i'm sure over just a regular pair of jeans um like a good fitting pair of jeans and some chucks or something uh he probably he looked he from what i'm assuming he looked good so i was actually really upset with her Uh, i don't know her personally i don't know this girl uh, this woman, um, I sorry, feel I, sorry. Sorry to say, sorry to sorry to this woman. I feel bad I don't for this, know woman. this woman. Um, but I actually do feel bad for her because you know the first aid is foundational. I think we live in such an instant society that we expect everything and everyone to be perfect. Yeah. And you know, unless you gave him parameters of what to wear, which you shouldn't do that on a first date, in my opinion, unless you're going somewhere formal and just be like, hey, wear yeah, a sports yo, coat. Yo, dress, dress yeah, dress like, coat, oh, you know, wear, wear a sports coat. Like, they're, yeah. they're, don't wear Tim's. Um, but I just, I felt like it was really insulting and honestly shows more about her than it does about him. So he probably dodged a really good bullet or um, uh, he, he dodged a bullet because she's overly superficial because if that's what you're going to go, not to your girlfriends, but on Twitter about, like, sis, it's clear, like, from what I hear from single women that I know, the dating game is not easy out there. And finding a decent guy who's not going to ghost you, um, who's actually going to show up to the date, it's not easy to do. You know, there are some creepers. There's the killer, according to Wendy Williams. Like, people like people doing stuff. So you found this guy. And you know what? One thing I did wonder, I was like, I, I hope she didn't let him pay for dinner. Because you're not going to come clowning and roasting him on Twitter and let him pay for dinner. Like chivalry should be should have died in that meal um but i just felt like you know the thing with dating is dating to the end goal if it being marriage it is it's growth it's an evolution it's it's changing i've i've casualized myself a bit um being with david because you know there are some times where i would dress i would overdress and it wasn't necessary so you know i did learn like i never really wore hoodies I learned to appreciate hoodies because of David. Hoodie season, uh, baby. I don't need 50, 11 of them like David does. <laughs> Anytime we go to a store, he's like, ooh, look at this hoodie. It's like, you already have this in you black. You already have a great hoodie. <laughs> but, you know, you know, I've, you know, just even what I'm wearing now, like I'm wearing leggings and a crop top. Like that's not, that's something that I probably wouldn't have worn. Maybe I would have worn it, but with heels. Um, but I've, I've learned fashion, fashion wise from him and he's learned from me. And we, you know, when we decide like to put in the effort and step out, I mean, we, we clean up pretty well. She always looks better than I do though. She brings out my stock. But these, these COVID inches, a lot of my clothes just aren't working for, working for me. So I, I, I think True. it's unfortunate because, you know, to your earlier point, he could probably be an amazing man. He probably just, you know, would have been willing to grow with her and learn with her and see, okay, this is how she's dressing. Well, let me step up my game so my woman and I can be on the same level. So when we go places, no one is questioning, you know, why is she with him, blah, blah, blah. But he, she didn't even leave the door 
for that opportunity to step in. She didn't, you, you can't expect the first date to be so great that there's no room for growth. Like this, right. it, it, it's just really, it's sad because, you know, you said, yeah, he could, he could be trash. He could be, we don't know him. We don't, we won't know him you unless know he, man. unless he does like a, a post, a response. Sorry post. to this man. But you know, I'm assuming that, you know, he was, I'm assuming he's a good dude. And I'm assuming that, you know, he could have, they could have created that vision of a power couple, which is probably what she wants. But I think she wants what, like most people, we want the package to arrive fully assembled. And that's not always how things work. Like sometimes you need to, you need to read the directions and you need to build things. Or you got to look at Ikea directions that don't include words and then you have to interpret it like mimes. But it's just, it, it just seemed unnecessary to go to social media. It, it, it again, gives me great relief to know that i don't have to date anymore i feel for any man who has to date her because it's like well what are you looking for like she sh you showed up in a dude showed up in a polo and that wasn't good enough like if he th showed up in a three-piece suit she probably would have been like who he trying to stunt on so it's like damned if you do damned if you don't uh but i didn't think i'm glad that people recognized and came for her um, and I hope that she takes a moment to reflect because you can't say you want a good man. You want all of these things in a man and not be willing to actually put in the work because at the end of the day, as a woman, yeah, we want all these great things from a, a man, but like, are we a great thing too? Like Ooh. the Bible, all, the Bible says, if we want to get are, real, we, are we too, are we a too great a great thing? The Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing, but are you a good thing to be found? Open Proverbs. Open the good book and confirm this with it. Look at yourself. Look inside. Look at thine self. And determine if you are a good thing worth being found. So I do I do think that that, that applies too. She kind of showed some true colors. She needs to grow. Um, she Because that superficialness, yeah, you'll find a guy who might fit into that, but he's probably going to have some flaws that you also don't like, like other women want in him too. So, I mean... Molding is part of relationships, and I, I'm just disappointed that that's the, the route she chose to take. But I appreciate people coming to this this king's defense um, and seeing his royalness. Protect, protect this king. Protect this king. <laughs> black kings. We need to protect. We need to protect our black kings and queens. Yeah. Um, and I hope somebody talks to her and is just like, sis, he's probably a good dude. And it, and I wonder, like, there are so many details we need to know. Does she post this at the beginning of the date? And then maybe by the end of the date, realize like, oh, he's really not that bad. Or was this post at the end of the date? And maybe he was trash. And she was just like, your attitude's bad. Your breath stank. You didn't pay for dinner. And then you wore our <laughs> Aeropostale shirt. So I'm just going to put you out here on Twitter. Um, but you never know. But the dating game, y'all are amazing who endure and I just hope you get what you're looking for because you're resilient. Better than me. I'd be single. I'd be like Paul. I'd be like God said. God didn't say everybody needed somebody. I'm good. Get me a cat I'm allergic to. And with that, I think we'll <laughs> I think we'll wrap this one up. But yeah, um I don't know why, like I said, that it, it got me so riled up when I when I looked at it. Um because that's you. It was me. It was you. And no, actually, he was. He considering what he was wearing, what we could see, he was actually a lot. He was a little more advanced. Further, further ahead than, than I was. I had to go through a lot of a lot of growth. But I mean, it could have been you with a different been, a different woman, and then different time. Yeah, just, it could definitely could have been me. Um, I feel like we're talking like when somebody <laughs> somebody could have been me. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's this episode, episode twenty eight seven. 27? 27 of Rush Vibes. Man, I don't know when we're going to stop. We need to have like a season one. Like Dude. that with that like stops. Nothing's just not. We're going to be in like episode 200. So it'll be season one. So uh, I we'll, think when we do our like official family vacation, we'll probably do like a season episode break. Yeah. Or knowing maybe. us, we'll just do a remote. We do a episode remote episode of, of Rush Vibes. Because this is running back and forth. Because this is fun. We enjoy this every time we get to sit down and, and cut an episode. It's highlight of my. One, well, usually it's the highlight of my day, unless the kids do something really awesome or we do something together. But for the most part, this is uh, this is something we definitely look forward to. So uh, if you uh, haven't yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're watching us here on YouTube or hit the like button if you enjoyed the episode. Thank you to anyone who has subscribed this week. Uh, we are still looking forward to get to getting to 100 subscribers. That's like our last, you know, first milestone we have to hit. We've hit it on both Facebook and Instagram. 
looking forward to hitting it on YouTube. So please go ahead and one, share this with anybody who you think would enjoy the conversations we had today or any of our past conversations. Um, we're all about building the vibe tribe. So uh, connect with us on social media, we're on Instagram, Facebook. Um, if you want to uh, connect with us there, you, you can. Uh, you can also support Rush Vibes uh, via Cash App, R-U-S-H-D-V-I-B-E-S. We will gladly accept any opportunity to receive some uh, some support, financial support, <laughs> as we uh, as we continue to grow the grow the podcast and you know with equipment and, and things like that. So, uh, thank you to our anyone who's supported us so far. So we'll be back next week. Episodes every Wednesday. I'm going to be better about trying to get those out in the morning so that you guys uh, can watch it before you sit down for work or, or drive into work as you know the more and more of the economy is opening back up but um yeah definitely episodes every wednesday both here on youtube and then uh, your favorite podcast platform of choice anything else that's it oh uh and we ran some ads or we ran an ad last week yes we're gonna run an ad on this episode we've run an ad on this episode as well but in case you missed it or skipped it <laughs> no judgment um Please be sure to uh, look at our social media. Um, our friends over at Married and Having Fun podcast, they are hosting a marriage retreat, couples okay. retreat, excuse me, um, second weekend in June, I believe, the 11th through the 13th. So we um, have been given the opportunity to promote here on Rush Vibes. Um, there's a lot in the package. Uh, don't ask me to read it all because I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this from, you know, off the cuff here a little bit, but we'll have the information posted in our description. Um, and also we'll make a post about it on our Instagram and Facebook posts. And then you can also head over to marrying and having fun to check it out. But, um, you get a lot for a great getaway weekend, um, for only 450 bucks. If you use the uh, promo code rush vibes, R U S H D V I B E S rush vibes, baby. And if you have any questions, uh, hit up married and having fun, hit their DMS, go ahead, slide in there. Um, uh, but do so. You know, respectful. Res respectful man. These married women, okay? Be respectful. I mean, I don't know why you would slide in there <laughs> for a couple's retreat if you're if you had other intentions. But uh, slide in there and uh, hit them up with any questions you have, and they'll they'll definitely get get back to you as as soon as possible. So, um, yeah, couples retreat. If you if you need something to do in June and you're local to North Carolina, or even if you're not, and you're not too far away. Something you should look into. So, with that, we'll bring Jay Belk in. Hey Jay. Well, weather is nice. Get outside, enjoy yourselves, um, especially if you've been vaccinated. <laughs> Don't wear Aeropostale. We'll see you guys next week. We love you. We out. Peace. way too fucking stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too fucking stop me now.